So it's time to plant my sweet peas. In fact, it's past time to plant my sweet peas. But I got a problem. They're supposed to go right here. See these beautiful tulips? These things, as you can tell, are just about to start to bloom. So what do I do? You know, I get myself in this trouble all the time. I like to grow uh, flowers in the four small beds in the vegetable garden. I always put a TP of sweet peas in the middle of it, and I'll never change that because I love it. I also like to make the most of these beds to be able to grow some tulips here because I can't grow those anywhere else in the garden because of the deer. But I always get optimistic and I sort of forget that here, tulips bloom very late, well after it's time to be planting these sweet peas. So I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna to try to have the best of both worlds here. I am gonna to have to lose some in the center here and probably some foliage, leave the flowers, but get rid of some of the foliage. Uh, it is not an ideal solution, but I got myself into this situation. I guess I better get myself out of it. So the tricky part about this is that I like to add some manure when I'm planting my sweet peas because they're really hungry plants and they appreciate that. So I'm going to have to gently dig some holes here and try to get spork some manure down in there. Okay, next step is I have to put the trellises in. Now, uh, I always use these bamboo stakes in these, um, which I plain paint black, but because I don't sand them or anything first, the paint has started sort of sloughing off and I have no black spray paint. And of course, times being what they are, I'm not gonna run out to the hardware store for black spray paint. So we will just say that these sweet peas are gonna cover these bamboo canes relatively quickly and I'm not gonna worry about it. As you can tell, these are the ones I used last year. I didn't even clean the twine off them. I like to put the canes in before I put the sweet peas in. So that that way I can plant sweet peas at each corner and then some. Of course I forgot my knife and a pruner, so that's super handy. Uh, the good news is I found a scissors over by the other bed. The bad news is that this is supposed to be our kitchen shears, but it works. Oh man, tying string with gloves on is a fool's errand. Now sweet peas will not twine themselves up this. So what you have to do is sort of tie them in and get them going in the right direction. And then once they do that, they become sort of self-supporting. Okay. Now, um, I usually plant sweet peas in clusters of the same rough color. So I'm just gonna have to pick out some sweet peas and see what I'm gonna do here. So you can see the sweet peas are looking great, some a little bit better than others, but they're starting to yellow a little bit. They need to be out of these pots. They're all gonna be growing in together, which is gonna be a real pain in the butt. So I can't put this job off any longer. So fortunately I had the smarts that when I did my tag, I wrote on the back the color of them so I don't have to look these all up. So this is Windsor, which is kind of a chocolate color. So I'll plant that probably with reds, I would think. Um, I seem to be coming up with a lot of blues and purples and I know I plant a lot of those. So I think I'll probably just do blues and purples here and then we'll also do those on another one. So in case you were curious, can you see all these roots coming out of the bottom? Uh, these sweet peas need a new home badly. 
Um, but boy, look at how nice and healthy that is. It just needs to get out of there. So there's no rhyme or reason to the way I put these into the root trainers. So I've got two Mr. P's right here. I think I'll take one of those for starters and keep looking for more blues. Should have organized that a little better. So here's what they look like when you take them out of the root trainer. See how that just sends all the roots down? Um, so that's how you get around the whole thing that peas don't like having their roots disturbed. Now I'm just going to slide this guy in. Probably need my little shovel again. By this post. Usually I go on the outside of the post, but because of the tulip situation here, we're just going to go by the inside of the post. I always stick their labels by them because at some point if you really fall in love with one, you want to know which one it was. Um, this one is called Turquoise Lagoon. I'm not kidding, the blooms are turquoise. It is unbelievable. Now they change, um, but that'll look really pretty with Mr. P, which is kind of a flaked purple. So these aren't actually all tulips in here. There are actually some daffodils and I think some hyacinths, hyacinths mixed in here. Um, this is a blend from Longfield. And I am looking forward to seeing it bloom. It's just that I didn't do a very good job planning the whole thing out. This one's called Our Harry, which is a blue. That's all my label says is blue. So. And this one's called Blue Shift. Let's just assume it does what it says. That one will go in the center. And I am going to have to lose one tulip. Okay, the next job is to tie all these in. I don't tie them tightly on here, just enough to get them going in the right direction. And like I said, eventually they manage themselves. Now, if you're planting in the ground, which I will do with some of these elsewhere in the garden, um, you do need to do something to protect against rabbits. Rabbits seem to particularly like sweet peas, even though I think they're inedible. Normally ra animals are pretty good about that, but maybe rabbits aren't smart enough. If they're tall enough, you might actually have to tie them in, in two places. Like this one is, gosh, that's like probably 14 inches tall. This one has a bent stem, so I don't know actually if this stem will make it, but I'll tie it in anyways, and there's a second stem that's fine. So if this stem doesn't make it, the other one should be fine. And then this guy in the middle, I usually just sort of let him grab on like that. This one. Sometimes you can just sort of tuck them in enough to get going. Okay, so now everyone's tied in. Three more boxes to go. So a lot of people want to know if I overwinter the bulbs that are in these. So I don't go out of my way to, um, you know, I still plant lots of flowers in here, but I don't take the bulbs out. So if the bulbs can make it as these have, then they're welcome to stay. So I did not plant anything new in this bed last year. 
It's extremely unfortunate that my manure got wet because manure is not really easy to work with anytime. It's particularly unpleasant to work with when it's wet. So the situation that I've created for myself here doesn't just end with these sweet peas. A lot of the um, annuals that I'll be growing here, I sow direct. And a lot of those should be sown right around the frost-free date, which is, um, oh, yeah. Well, actually, now that I think about it, our frost-free date was uh, three days ago. Uh, it's been so cold that it hadn't even occurred to me that we were technically at our frost-free date. So, really, I should be getting in here and direct sowing some of these things. I'm not going to do that. Some of those things will just have to wait. I am not going to sacrifice all these beautiful bulbs. So, some of those things will just have to... Wait, maybe I can sow them in, I might sow them in pots and then transplant them. So if that's blue, this one should be either oranges and pinks or red, I think. So let's see what we got in those departments. So we're gonna start with one of my favorites from last year called Prince of Orange. Just produced like crazy. So because um, sweet peas don't like root disturbance, even though these are kind of clustered at the bottom, we're just going to let them be like that and let it figure it out inside of here. Okay. I think I'll do oranges and pinks on this one. So I should look for some, some hot pinks. This one is called Apricot Queen. I did not put a color on it because I assumed that I knew it would be apricots. Okay, this one is Mrs. Bernard Jones and it's a hot pink. This is Restamorel. It says it's coral pink. I think I grew this one last year. Or, cor excuse me, coral red. I don't know what coral red is, but it sounds like it would go well with the rest of these. I think this was the tray on the end and it's not looking nearly as good as the rest of them um, but we'll stick this guy in this is mark herod which is scarlet so i think this is a good example of just making the best of a situation when things aren't going exactly the way you had planned hopefully everything will coexist here i can't wait to see these um well everything here bloom frankly um but Sometimes you gotta just keep moving on with what the garden demands and that's the sweet peas in the ground. So, and as far as these bulbs go, you know, I think what I will do is after they bloom, I will probably just cut the foliage off right away. If the, the bulbs have enough energy to come back next year, that's great. I probably won't pull them, um, but we'll see. Uh, I just have to kind of get on with getting these planted. And then next year, I'm probably gonna have to rethink what goes in these beds in terms of a bulb because this situation obviously is not perfect. Um, I am really excited though because not only are these tulips popping, I have a hyacinth about to bloom. And I know some of you are probably like in amazement because the last time you saw a hyacinth was probably like three months ago, but they're just starting to happen here. So that's exciting. I hope there's something exciting happening in your garden today. We'll see you soon. Bye.